Welcome back. You're watching the Full View special broadcast taking place later on here live. We're bringing you African-American anti-apartheid activist and U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who's set to deliver the Oliver Tumble Memorial Lecture tonight. It happens at 7 at the Birchwood Hotel and Conference Center in Ekurleni to tell a little bit more about what's coming out of that lecture. And, of course, the significance of her delivering this particular lecture. Let's cross now to our reporter, Mangoba Mkunu, who's standing by with the OR Tamil Fire Nation Chairman Duma Ngosi for the latest. Mangaba. Well, of course, uh, the guests starting to trickle in here ahead of uh, that uh, memorial lecture in honor of uh, the late uh, former ANC president, uh, Oliver Tambo, which uh, takes place uh, here at the Birchwood Hotel at uh, the O.R. Tambo Center, named in honor of him, of course. And uh, we have seen some of the members of the Tambo family arriving here to be part of the event that's taking place here today. Of course, we've also seen some of the ANC struggle veterans who have also been here, who have been invited to this event, the likes of uh, Mamo Sophia Debrain, who was, of course, part of the 1956 Women's March to Parliament. She is here. She's among the dignitaries that are invited here. Of course, we do expect the formal program to begin at 7 o'clock this evening, and of course, it will lead up to that uh, speech, that keynote address by U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who, of course, will deliver that later on. But just to get a sense of uh, what to expect and the legacy uh, uh, of uh, Babu Oliver Tambo, I'm now joined by the chair person of uh, the, or, the Oliver and Adelaide Tambo Foundation, Ubaba Udumankosi. Babu Nkosi, thank you very much for your time here. Yeah. Firstly, let's start uh, with this event. Why is it important to remember uh, Oliver Tambo uh, for what he did to this country? I think um, the foundation not being the same with others, we're talking about a couple, you know, for lack of a better term. We're talking about Oliver and Adelaide Tambo. They contributed to the progress we have as a country and um, today is a day before the birthday of Oliver Tambo because he will be 102 years old tomorrow 27th October 2019 so the foundation actually have uh, agreed that we should be able to do more work that balances the issue of women youth and people with disability we do actually have projects which actually are helping us to have more sense on the growth and development of women academically and professionally but on the side of uh, tambo tambo was a mathematician he was a teacher and uh, he was actually a strategist in a big way because in some of the things that are done in this country it was actually a point of the energy and work that he put to be able to negotiate pre-1990 to a point of getting the constitution of this country. I think uh, there are members of the foundation that say we can see the genes of Tambo within the South African constitution. So he has done a lot for us and on our part, first time, it's our sixth uh, lecture, first women lecture that we've got and someone who comes from outside country because Tambo was a global icon. He was actually traveling all over the world talking about the challenge we have of our apathy in this country and he was the one that really explained to the rest of the world how we're dealing with issues around the country but the most important thing that we're able to do in the municipality in Eguruleni when the demarcations were coming out in terms of the moving of the airport to, from Johannesburg to Israel then, we were able to actually then, as a municipality, as residents in Ekuruleni, to actually get the name of Oar Tambo to be named for the airport. So I was speaking to the wife of uh, uh, Molinko now. He was on a, a, a British airway. And he says, no, he was, she was a bit surprised when they were just about to land, when they said, welcome to OR Tambo International. And of course, this speaks to some of the legacy work uh, that remains uh, of uh, Oliver Tambo. Yeah. But of course, uh, he, education yeah. being one of his passion, he was a teacher himself. Yeah. The, the foundation itself yeah. running some educational 
uh, sort of uh, activities or sort of, um, you know, some of the initiatives you're involved in to yes. empower the youth? Yes. What are some of those? Well, at this point, we're actually working with the NRC, which is actually the institution under uh, science and technology. We are actually looking at about 10 students that will be uh, given uh, opportunity to study at the highest level of technology. But further, we're looking at actually those who can come on the technical space so that they are able to actually graduate as technicians. And we're looking at the majority being female students that will actually go through that program. And also, I think on the other side, you need 1,400 kids at the home of our Tambo at Nkantolo. We are actually looking at those kids being given support, sanitary pads, uh, you know, their wellness education, sex education, being able to get to a point where they can be able to look after themselves, and even the boy, boy child. We are trying to actually make sure that young men grow up in a space where they know the younger women around them and they are able to actually to be taught about things that we actually didn't do well to a point that we have so many challenges at the education space for young girls, girls and boys. Talking about the issue of young girls and boys, of course, gender issues play a very central role in our society. And I know that you have some projects that you're involved in as uh, the foundation to deal with gender issues. One of them, you've mentioned the sanitary pets yeah. issues. But how important is it to address these issues now? Well, I think at this point, I'm empowering the young girl, but also uh, helping the young boy. You actually get to a point where you can be able to get them working together you know, to be able to actually, you know, propel themselves as equals. Because uh, you don't actually have to have a young girl who say, I won't do maths, I won't do science, because, you know, I don't think it will be easier for me. We should actually encourage them to go to any level of engagement. At this stage, you see even young girls who actually are pilots, and they actually do strategic uh, issues which relates to future of what we knew as space for men. But you actually can uh, get uh, a point because the foundation is having a CEO who's female and the rest of the team, which is total of four at this stage, are all female. And uh, I'm the chairperson of the foundation. I take instructions from them to be able to know what's actually happening around our space and what value can we add as those who are actually men who are actually of age supporting young people to be able to take the process forward. Of course there's so many social ills uh, that we're facing now. We have yeah. unemployment, yes. we have uh, you know sexual abuse and gender abuse and so forth. I mean these are surely things that Oliver Tambo would not be proud of uh, yes. in this day and age. What is it that you're doing as a foundation to kind of help deal with some of these issues? Yes, I think uh, working with schools is actually one big issue that is re helping a great deal because when you actually go for wellness, you know, it's actually looking at health and well-being of younger people. Those things in terms of what their futures, because at school you would actually find kids when they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? That's when they actually express that you can actually get sense of their understanding, that they can read in schools, read and not understand. It's actually a big thing that we're actually hoping, empowering the young people who should be able to help them get to a point where they can read and understand and be able to actually continue with life in a way that adds value. And they should actually be able to know that as leaders and young South Africans, what is actually the future? Because at the end of the day, it's actually a generation which we're in, which is older. We should actually give that support to them. And the, the younger ones will be able to actually carry on with their lives. But at this stage, we should actually support programs which empowers them to be able to take the process forward, with or without us. But on our part, I think as an elderly, we should actually accept we do have a role to play. And just finally, yeah. what values should the young ones especially learn from the likes of Oliver Tambo? Well, I think respect, uh, credibility, and uh, the point of self-confidence, you know, confidence. it's actually quite important. But when you actually look at uh, what they can be, the, the future is theirs. They should actually be the ones that are confident to take the process forward and help us as younger, as older people 
to know actually what role they can play moving forward, particularly women. Okay, let's stop it there due to time. Thank yes. you very much for joining us, Dumangosi, who is the chairperson of the Oliver and Adelaide Tambo Foundation, uh, giving us a synopsis of what to expect and, of course, uh, what values we should uh, remember of uh, the late uh, former president uh, of the ANC, Oliver Tambo. Right, thank you very much, Mangoba. As we mentioned earlier on, we will bring you that lecture live.